Good morning. Hope this week has been good for every one of you out there. Today's episode is about basing your model. I have finished this Orc War Boss this week, and well, I say finished. There's one last step. That's an important one. Let's jump into it. I this episode may probably be a short one, but it's a very important one. You see, basing your model is kind of your last step on getting a figure finished. And why should you do it? I mean, you feel like, hey, I've got this model done. I don't need to do anything else. And maybe you don't. Maybe you like to have a plain base on your model. That's okay. Some people do. I don't. Um, and I'll tell you why. There's an old rule from a long time ago that I heard called faces and bases. And right now all I'm doing is I saw a little spot that needed a little touch up with white. You probably can't see it on camera. But I do here on this side. So I'm just putting a little dot of white paint well, I see an error in fixing it. But anyway, um, faces and bases. That was an old saying that's been around for a while. And what faces and bases means is uh, those are the two most important parts of a model that you make sure you get right, is the face and the base. Because you see, that's what people notice. Face is obvious, but base, why would they notice that? Well, it makes the model stand out. It gives it a contrast to the model. It makes people see it more and it just works. So maybe we should go over what I'm doing here. Um, I am using the uh, GW Texture Paints for this model and for all my Orc Boys. The reason I'm doing that is uh, I like the painted on stuff. Um, it works pretty well. I was pleasantly surprised by it when it first came out and I used it a few years ago. Um, I wouldn't say that I would use it for every model out there, but uh, for these horde armies that I'm doing, it tends to work well. Or the horde army I'm doing. I'm not doing armies. Oh my god, could you imagine? Uh, then what I did is uh, I used some uh, Agrax Earthshade on the base and I uh, let that dry for a day. Uh, not that it needed it, but just, just that I decided to take a hike yesterday and uh, didn't have time to paint much. But now I'm going over the base with uh, Ushapti Bone, um, which is actually the wrong step. <laughs> um, teachable moment on a live stream here. Um, and looking at my paper, I'm supposed to be doing Xandri Dust. And this is exactly why you need to write down what you're doing. Um, I had originally only done Nushab de Bone over the um, model, but it, uh, the uh, Xandri Dust is really close in color to the uh, Armageddon Dunes which is what I used for the base paint and so since it is what that lets me do is kind of blend the colors better bring it back up after that wash without being so stark of a contrast so that's what I'm doing right now I've got an old old brush is really not useful for much more than basing models right now. I have to be careful because I've got so much going on on this miniature. There's the squig, there's the war boss himself. I've got some rocks that I that the uh, war boss and squig are standing on that I want to stay a little darker 
as a contrast, but still look like they came from the same terrain. It's the thing a lot of a lot of times you have rocks that are very different in an area. A lot of times you have rocks if you look at a desert especially. Desert rocks tend to be very close in proximity to the color of the sand around them and that's because that's where those rocks come from. So, you know, be windblown over the years. So I'm wanting to make sure that these rocks, while they look a little different, still look pretty close to the terrain around them. Also when you're basing, it's very easy if you're not careful to undo all the work you've done previously. So you need to be very careful when you base. But a lot of this is a technique called dry brushing. And most of you out there are probably familiar with dry brushing or at least heard of it. It's probably one of the first more advanced, I wouldn't say, well, not even advanced, one of the first techniques that a lot of us had learned with painting that made us go, wow, I'm an artist. Most for me, I remember the first time I dry brushed something and went, oh my god, I did that. It looks so cool. Okay, so now that my Zandri dust has been applied, now give my brush a quick rinse. I'm going to make really sure to get all the water off of it because if uh, I've got any water left on this, it's just going to almost turn the paint to a wash, which we don't want. We want this brush to be dry. It's dry brushing. That's why you use an old brush because you're going to beat the devil out of the thing. Then we go to Ushabti Bone. This is our last <laughs> guys I am making sure on my paper that uh, I'm doing the right colors. No <laughs> actually I don't go Ushabti Bone which is hilarious that I'm doing this so wrong. I think it's live stream jitters or something. I'm not really nervous. What I use is this dry compound for my last step. That's why I'm checking my paper. That's why I got quiet off camera. Boy, I'm giving you some quality programming this morning. Um, now I use this Terminatus Stone. It's in the, sh the uh, I like to call it color arc um, of what I've been using previously. And, uh, these dry compounds, I have mixed feelings about them. I bought this one a while back to do some models because it was in the GW palette on this particular thing I was using or doing. Um, I don't hate them, but to be honest with you, unless it's just a very specific color you're looking for, you can dry brush with any paint. These make it a little easier, but you've got to make very 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 sure that your lid is closed when you're done with these because uh, these dry compounds are shocker I know dry very dry and that's what I don't really like I in an area like mine with really high humidity it's very easy for these to just dry out completely in no time the very first one I ever had I even had the lid closed tight and it um, it totally dried up on me and so that's my issue with them oh, I shouldn't even leave it open like that on camera even for demonstrative purposes it's a bad idea okay so it doesn't have to be I don't have to go crazy with it because if I do it'll look like snow instead and that's not what we want but uh I don't know if you can see that there or not. Let's see if I can tilt this. Yeah, there we go. You can see that the uh, base is pretty well done. If you notice, though, uh, the lip, the rim of the base, it's got a lot of gunk on it from painting. And that's okay. That's our last step, which is just cleaning up the lip of the base, making that pretty. 
Um, I don't have any of my pallets on hand right now, so I'm going to do something that you shouldn't do. <laughs> but if you're in a bind for quick paint and you get a better brush, you don't need to use your old dry brush for this and put that back. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to water down the paint inside the lid of the pot. You should probably always transfer your paint. But this is a quick way if you want to grab a paint and uh, putting some water in the pot's not going to hurt anything. Um, these Games Workshop paints have this little uh, lip on the bottle. And uh, if you shake the paint, it always gets stuck right there. I don't know why they put those lips in there. I'm sure there's a physics of paint reason. But for my purposes, it helps me mix a little water in. Get that paint thinned down real quick and do a quick and dirty um, paint selection. So if I'm not going to be using the paint but for one thing, sometimes I'll do that. Uh, is it a bad habit? Probably. But I did it. And I continue to do it. And I'm probably not going to break the habit. We've all got our bad habits, I'm sure, when it comes to painting. Probably some of us don't clean our brushes like we should. You used to not. I used to, gosh, I used to go through brushes like they were water. I'd buy like those cheapy packs of brushes, thinking that was the way to do it. It is not, folks. Um, and I will tell you, when you feel confident with painting and they feel like this is something you want to do, getting a good quality brush or two or three is worth every penny because I will paint hundreds of models with a good brush before I need to get rid of it. And uh, even then I'm still using those brushes for a while for basing brushes and things like that. And uh, if you take care of them they'll last you a very long time whereas those cheap synthetic hair brushes just, they just don't last. I don't even care if you take care of them. They just start to fray and split really fast. I mean, I've even had them go unusable after one model. I've had them be that cheap before. So, you do get what you pay for. And right now I'm using the flat side of the brush. I'm going to talk about what I'm actually doing here. I'm using the flat side of the brush to go around the rim of the base. And if you use the flat, it, the bristles don't bend over on you. So then you don't undo what you did on all the basing earlier. Just going right up to the edge of where that base meets the lip of the base meets the basing material. Give it a nice clean line and I'm going around it twice. Um, I've thinned the paint down so that um, it's going to be almost a water texture and the reason I do that is this, you really, really don't want brush strokes on your rim of your base. It really shows up. So having a thin paint is super important. It's almost better to go overly thin and do another coat. Or it is better to go overly thin and do another coat than it is to not um, have it thinned out enough and have lines. So I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. And I'll come back and do another coat. But then this guy is effectively done to a point. What I'm going to do next is uh, this is what I use. Um, I use a tester's dull coat. It's uh, very expensive for what it is. It's like five bucks a can. And you see how small that can is. But I really like what the effect it gives me and in the humidity that we have here. It tends to work really well and doesn't uh, fog up. That is the one thing that I've fought for years was trying to find. I would find a clear coat of paint that I thought would work well and it would fog up on me and it would look bad. Some people don't um, steal their models. And I think, uh, especially if you're doing competitive painting, you probably shouldn't. But... 
I use mine for game pieces. It makes them last longer and long term. It uh, just makes my paint not rub off when I'm using them. So I do that. If I have paint rub off in a battle foam case in the past on me, then um, it's surely going to rub off if I'm just not base, you know, not coating them and moving them around on the table. I've seen it happen. So yeah, clear coat your models. So after I clear coat, what I'm going to do is I come back with uh, Midland Tufts. Let me go grab something off camera real quick. I'll kind of show you a finished base up close so you can see the finished product. Be back one sec. All right, so yes, uh, that's kind of what, let's see if I can get some better light than that. This camera's blocking, giving me a lot of cross shadow, so yeah, there we go. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so there's a finished base, you get the idea. Those tufts, I really do like them. Um, you don't have to glue them. They already have a uh, adhesive on them. Uh, the Army Painter makes some as well, and I think they're just fine. I think they do the same thing. Um, but yeah, I like those because they've got a, excuse me, almost like a, a poster tack type material. It's a real gummy that they use on those Midland Tufts and it works really well for sticking them to the base and just going. Um, I will take uh, the end of my paintbrush sometimes and stick them down or I will use uh, this is a like a dental pick type tool I will use and I use this for a lot of times modeling green stuff as well as um, for uh, sticking those down to the base and it helps a lot. I'll take this end like this and I'll push down on those tufts. But I will say this and the reason I made a video on on basing your models is when you get to this point, at least for me, a lot of times, a lot of times, I can be tired. You know, I've been working on these guys for days now. I, I just want to quit. Why do I you know, why do I need to do this? Why do I need to go through and do the base? I'll even think that to myself, even knowing what I know about it. It's all about the secret to this, and I've heard this on some podcasts and stuff, uh, specifically shout out to Forge the Narrative, um, where they talk about taking that extra step, that extra five minutes to make a model look that much better and it really does it's shocking um, I remember the first time I ever started weathering a model um, and we'll get into weathering in a, in a future video um, you know taking that extra little bit to make it look a certain way and you don't think you're doing much to it and then you step back after having done that and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much better that looks. It's just really amazing once you learn a new technique and you try that extra little bit. Working against your brain because your brain sometimes can be like, oh no, it's good enough. Don't worry about it. Just, just be done. I want to not focus on something for a minute. But if you can get into doing stuff in the left side of your brain where you just kind of get zen almost and do it once you learn these techniques, you'll find a lot of time has passed and you're able to get that model to the next step. So yeah, like I said, I'm just going to... Uh, it's raining right now this morning early. Very humid. But later to... Oh, sorry about that. The microphone there. But later today... 
um, when it gets uh, a little cleared up I'll take that guy outside I'll spray him with some uh, testers dull coat and he'll be done after I put the tufts on him let me give you a little update on the shape of shade spire so our last video there was about um, putting together models and we use shade spire models as an example and you did not see these guys on the video other than being on the sprue after that video I kept working on models and wouldn't you know we are done with putting together these guys uh, one thing that happened and I don't know if I did it or not uh, her shoulder and you probably I, matter of fact I know you can't because I've seen the playbacks of the streams but on her shoulder here um, there's a little I don't know if it was in the cast or what but there's a hole so I'll have to come back with some uh, probably just liquid green stuff because it's a very minor hole and fill that in but I'm probably going to try to work on the Stormcast Eternals this weekend. Hopefully maybe get them finished. Um, and try to work on the corn guys as well. Uh, also took the plunge. <laughs> as you know I had to. And uh, I picked up the orcs as well. After trying the game out. For me personally, I have to tell you, I was really pleasantly surprised by this game. Um, I do like competitive games, and the reason I do is they tend to be balanced if they're designed to be competitive. Not always, but a lot of times they are. And this is a really, really fun, strong game. It is very straightforward. Um, it's deep but not very wide. The rules seem like they're, excuse me, the rules seem like they're very tough to get your mind around what you play, but what you go through a round or two, it gets really going easily. And uh, I really, really enjoyed this game. I was very pleasantly surprised by it. So it's going to take some attention away from the orcs for just a little bit. It doesn't mean I'm going to stop them, um, but I feel like you know, I'm also, let's just be real, I'm doing a hobby channel, and I need variety. I think showing you nothing but orcs for, you know, the next year or two years, uh, it might get a little tedious. So, I think it's worthwhile to take a break, and the Shadespire models um, are a very nice way to show you different techniques. You know, the uh, Stormcast guys here are going to be a good way to show you golds show you some other basing techniques um, the uh, reavers bike back there are going to be a good way to show you skin tones human skin tones and all that so yeah I'm gonna take a little break I'm gonna get these Shadespire guys painted I'm gonna get these orcs done just so I can kinda have a nice new different way to show some different techniques and I'm just really enjoying that game now. I really, honestly, in my life at this moment, don't have time for 40K. And that's kind of what this hobby channel is about. It's about hobbying for the rest of us, for those pe for those guys out there like myself who don't have, you know, four, five, six hours every day free to just go play games. I don't. I've got a wife. I've got family. I've got you know things that I've got to do in my life and enjoy doing enjoy those things but you know my gaming times not what it used to be and I will say Shadespire on the tin says it's fast paced and once you learn this game you play a game in 20 minutes that's very appealing to me right now um, because you know I used to play a lot of skirmish games I used to be a big Malifaux player 
but to be honest with you, uh, Malifo started taking longer than my 40k games because once you learn the strategies of it, the game actually took way longer. Uh, Shadespire does the complete opposite. Once you learn what you're doing, the games go really quick. I mean, it's three rounds, it's 12 movements, actions, and you're done. That's it's amazing. I've really enjoyed it from that standpoint. Well, guys, I also think I'll tell you this, too. Um, I think it'll probably be one of the first ones I do a battle report for. So once I get these all painted, I think I'm going to go through and, and do a couple Shades Fire battle reports because it lends itself really well to just camera on, camera off, showing you how to play the game. And I'm sure there'll be people out there showing me what I'm doing wrong. So that'll help me as well. But that's going to do it for this episode. Come back with us next time. I'm going to be going through, hopefully, and showing you progress on these guys. And uh, don't worry. I'm not forgetting about the orcs. We're just taking a little break. And focusing on what I have time for right now, which is Shadespire at the moment. So... Until we see you next time, guys, this has been GM Tuck. Happy hobbying.